start it. So let's start with the with the shoulder rolls, yeah. So last week we had a really grim and dark and cold week or start of the week of Monday. Today it's different, so hopefully everyone is feeling a bit more energized. It's really nice to see how you feel when the weather is different, isn't it? So the second side, roll the shoulders. And one more time. And then if you'd like to hold your shoulders when you finished what you were doing, and then let's move the elbows circularly. Try to move the elbows simultaneously. Yeah, so don't, you can see when the elbows come there, you can see one is rushing ahead. So trust your intuition, your inner feeling as you do the circles and move them. It's not easy at all, but the more you practice, the more skilled you become at this. So one more circle and then we are going to rest just for a moment. Relax the shoulders down, hold your shoulders, feel the shoulders. Relax your legs into the ground, pull the spine out of the ground and in your own time, go back with the arms or if you've been going back, then just change the direction. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And one more big circle, please. And that's enough. Let's shake out the arms. Now shake the hands. Three, two, one. And now you can put the hands down and just lift the shoulders up and then drop the shoulders down. Inhale, pull the shoulders to your ears. <sighs> Exhale out through the mouth as you drop the shoulders down. Continue in your own time, please. <sighs> pull the shoulders up to your ears as you inhale. <sighs> Exhale and drop the shoulders down. Yeah? Another five times, please. Last time. And release. All right, let's roll the head on the top of the spinal column. You can start in either direction. Relax your face as you roll the head. Relax your lips as well. And keep on breathing steadily. Another two rounds, please. Keep on breathing steadily as you roll the head. One more circle, last circle, and then come back to the center and stay in your center for a moment. Lift the top of your head towards the ceiling. Press your hands a little bit into your legs to open the chest and to release the shoulders backwards and downwards and pull your navel inwards and breathe into the belly. Feel your legs and buttocks connected with the ground. And lift your head towards the ceiling. Let's go in the opposite direction. And if you are unsure whether this is the second direction or the first, then do a circle in one direction and then the opposite direction. And most probably than not, you cannot know which one is the second direction. Or if you are well organized, you know. So just continue with the circles and keep your eyes closed, your face relaxed, your lips released. And if you can allow the head to become heavy and 
You had to lead the circles to move the neck and the shoulder regions out of their ordinary position, waking up. The sense is waking up the body. One more circle, please. And then lift your head up to the center line and take a few deep cycles of breath. If you are feeling a bit dizzy, don't worry. Take a few cycles of breath and you're uh, gonna, not gonna be dizzy anymore. Okay, so hold on to your legs, lean a little bit back and lift your chin away from your sternum, away from the chest. And now we're gonna draw circles with the chin leading forward, down, back to the neck and up. Circle with the chin leading forward. Again, it's quite important to keep the upper teeth away from the lower teeth. So your jaws are open and released. And make a bit bigger circles than you would do normally. And keep on breathing. And another three, please. And the last one. And come back to the starting position. Again, look up. Hold on to your legs, lean a little bit back. And now look down at your chest. Bring the chin close to your neck. Go down with the chin to the front, up. Look at the ceiling and bring the chin back to your neck. Yeah, so big circles with the chin leading in the opposite direction than before. If you hear your neck cracking inside your heart, inside your head, make smaller circles. Yeah? You won't hurt yourself, but uh, it's better to be safe than sorry. So just start with small circles and hopefully your neck will release in an optimal way like that. So one more big circle in this direction. and finish this practice come back to your starting position again lift the top of your head towards the ceiling and then turn your head simply to the right and hold on to your legs and try to twist a little more also your chest will twist and maybe you feel the hips also turning as you insist exhalation by exhalation and then rotate back to your center find your center line inhale Exhale and go in the opposite direction. Head, keep on exhaling and inhaling, of course, but turn with the exhalation. Turn, turn, turn. And come back to the center position. Okay, let's stretch out the legs and then we're going to do a little bit more with the head. So lift your legs open, keep them hip widths open and flex your feet. Yeah? So invite the nails of your feet towards you, step into the toes and then move your toes. Move your toes front and back. I think I haven't told you yet, but I found online an advertisement for uh, toe yoga. <laughs> so I thought that's interesting. People come up with all sorts. <laughs> it should be part of your normal yoga, but now you can do toe yoga. So you are doing toe yoga. <laughs> all right. So let's bring the feet close to the hips. Yeah. Feet in front of your hips. Hold on to your legs and just bow forward. Yeah, release your head, release your chest and your belly towards your thighs. You can lift the legs well open and bow your head. So more than anything else, you want to release the head at the moment. We're going to get to the spine as well to release the spine. This will release your spine, but probably the spine is still not very bendy. So work with the head. Chin comes in. Don't have to push it. Just allow the head to be heavy and lift the top of your head away from your shoulders away yeah the ears away from the shoulders so stretch through the neck don't hold your breath keep on breathing and let go and sit up straight bring the head up as last and then cross your legs and i'd like you to sit in sukhasana yeah so when the Lower legs are crossing in the middle and the knees are up, not on the floor. Yeah? I'd like 
you to get in this position for the next uh, exercise, which will be pulling the head to the right. Yeah? Left hand will be on the thigh, pressing into the thigh, and then gently pull the head to the right. Hold on to your left ear. And if you feel a really big stretch across the neck, just hold your uh, shoulder as well, your left shoulder, and create that stretch across the ear and your shoulder. Keep on breathing. Okay, now push the head back to the center. Wait for a moment in your center. Breathe in deeply, exhale deeply and lift the top of your head towards the ceiling again. Rest your right hand on your thigh and slowly start pulling the head over the left shoulder. And in the beginning, it's going to be always quite stretchy. Well, not stretchy, but uh, well, not painful, but, you know, it's a bit of a stretch, as we say it in English. So just hold on to your shoulder and that will help you a little bit ease that kind of a stretch. Keep on breathing. And now let's push back the head to the center. And again, lift the top of your head towards the ceiling, roll the shoulders back and down. And we're gonna go again, this time stretching out the arm, your left arm, sorry, my nose is itching, out on your side and lift your fingertips towards the ceiling. And now you can pull the head a little bit more. Yeah, keep on breathing. And now flex your hand and lift it up and down. Move the arm up and down. Keep on breathing. As you energize the neck, the shoulders and stretch the, all the nerves and muscles in the neck, in the shoulder. Keep your teeth released. Yeah, one more time. And that's enough. And we're gonna push the head back again to keep the length of the left side of the neck and top of the shoulder. Yeah, so when you come back to the center, first of all, keep on breathing. And you can feel that one side is really open and the other side feels as if it shrunk. So take the head, stretch out the arm on the other side, keep on breathing. First, just lift the fingertips towards the ceiling on your right side and then pull the head towards the left shoulder. And now flex your hand, right hand, and then keep the head flexed, but move the arms up and down. And normally this is the phase when you realize how many things are stuck in the neck or shoulders, yeah? And this is a, a brilliant way of releasing that tension in the neck and the shoulders. So keep on breathing and move through the exercise with your breath. Be patient with yourself and feel what your arm is doing. All right, one and one more time. And then you can put the hand on the leg and push back the head to the center and close your eyes and stay in your center, hopefully. Perhaps now the right side is longer than the left, but don't worry about that. It's, I think, just an illusion. So lift the head to the ceiling above you. Inhale deeply, exhale deeply, relax the shoulders, get ready to open your eyes and then come back. Okay, so stretch out the legs now, bring the legs together unless you are in your on your period. Flex together, flex the feet and I'd like you to take a hold of your elbows and lift your arms to the side of your ears. Lift the elbows into your hands and at the same time lift your arms up away from your shoulder. Now bring the shoulders down and again pull the arms up. Inhale, open your arms, open your eyes, your heart. Lift your hands towards the ceiling above you, sh shoulders come back down, feel your spine long and tall. Exhale and change the crossing of the arms. Next side. Lift the elbows first into your hands to spread across your shoulder blades and then lift the arms up, flex the feet at the same time. Keep on breathing, try to breathe down into the belly. One more time. 
And then again, open your arms, open your heart, your head. Leave the hands away from your shoulders. And we're gonna bring the arms down on the side of the body. So face forward, turn the palms away from each other. Exhale and push down the air on your side. Come back down with awareness. Put the hands on the sides of your hip. Bend the elbows and lift the elbows towards each other behind you. Yeah. So bend the elbows, bring the hands from there behind you and then try to bring the elbows behind you to open the chest. And now please look at your chest. Again, make sure your teeth are released, your face is released. One more deep cycle of breath, flex the feet and release. You can put the hands on the legs, keep the chin close to the neck and lift your head up. Yeah, you want to keep the length of your neck in line with your spine. Okay, so let's bend the right leg and then move the right leg with our hands right and left a couple of times. Let's do work on the hip, on the right hip. And then with your left hand, just take a hold of that leg. The other hand can go on the floor or on the bolster. And then pull the right leg in the direction of your left hip. And exhalation by exhalation, turn back. As always, we are twisting from the base of the spine. Press the foot into the ground to help you twist. And then come back to the center line. And now bow to that leg. All right, press the hands into the knees and then unfold your spine, backbone by backbone, sit up straight. And we're gonna change the crossing or the position of the leg. Left leg comes in, left foot in front of the hip. And then let's move that leg right and left, push with your arms, right and left, yeah? When you push it here, you should feel a little bit of a belly massage. One more time, and then you get hold of that leg, put the other hand on the bolster or on the floor, yeah? You don't wanna lean back, you wanna have your spine in upright position. So sometimes when you put the hand down there, that happens, and that's not what we want. We want the spine straight, so then put the hand there, Pull the left leg in the direction of your right hip and start rotating from right to left. Don't forget to breathe. You want to breathe through the asana. Exhale, twist one more time. Inhale, come back to the center slowly. Hold on to that knee. Exhale and bow to that knee. Breathe into your belly. One more deep cycle of breath. Press down on your knees and then unfold your spine. Come up straight. Bring the eyes back to eye level at last. And release. Okay, so we're gonna open the hips. Work on opening the hip a little more. So you want to have your bolster like this and I'm gonna sit on the bolster with your legs wide open. Yes, so we bring the legs wide open, flexing the feet. Okay, and then once you sat down, you wait a little bit and see if you can bring the legs a little bit more. You are sliding a little bit to the front, yes? So the hips are tilted. Very good. So flex the feet. And you want to have your kneecaps facing up. Yeah, so you can turn the thighs from outside in or inside out. So the kneecaps are facing upwards and flex the feet. You can hold the knees or the thighs and sit up straight, roll the shoulders back and down and spread across the collarbones, yeah? So again, we can pull the hands a little closer so the elbows can lift behind us towards each other. Yes, that's it, very good. Flex the feet. Now, make your feet stand up tall, yeah? So not like this, not like that, but perpendicular to the ground. Look at the foot and then the other foot and keep it 
alert and now step into your toes. Look at your foot again. Yeah, you position the foot and the minute you look at the other one, the first one goes out of alignment. So let's just do that for a little while. You can hold your leg in position and stretch through your heels. If you need, adjust the legs. If you feel that one is more open than the other, just adjust the leg. Yeah, and now look straight. And again, please take a hold of your elbows. Keep the feet flexed and then pull the arms out of the hips. You will feel that there is more space stretching out of the uh, base. Inhale, open your arms, lift them open, lift your hands to the, towards the ceiling, look at the ceiling, bring the shoulders back and down. Yeah, you can feel in the middle of your back kind of irritation, but just uh, breathe through that. Exhale and change the crossing of the arms again. Lift the elbows into the hands and then pull up. Pull the belly in. Inhale and one more time. Open up to the sky. Stretch through the arms. Lift the hands away from your shoulders. Yeah, and these are really good for bringing the blood pressure up. Whenever you lift the arms up, that helps with the blood pressure. Okay, face forward and we're gonna bring the arms down on the side of the body as we did before. Palms pushing the air down. Try to bring both arms down simultaneously. Okay, you can put back the hands on the knee and just turn your head over the right shoulder. Press down on your thighs. And exhalation by exhalation, turn your head a little more. All right, come back to the center. Second side. Keep your chin parallel with the ground. Exhale and turn. You can use your arms to help you twist, pressing the hands into the legs and pulling them in a way that helps you twist. Breathe into the belly. Exhale, come back to the center line. Okay, so you can put the hands down and then come forward. With the straight back, so look at the space, look at your hands, flex your feet, keep the spine in line, shoulders back and down, your neck in line with the spine, so you won't come forward too much. Come forward from your back, keep on breathing into the belly, and you might slide off your bolster or to the more to the front, and that is fine, and come back up straight. Put your hands back on the legs. Okay, so we can collect our legs and the best way to do it is when you do it one by one, you grab it and pull it and then the other one as well. Change the crossing the opposite way and we're gonna come to the front. So you can put the hands on the floor or on the knees and come forward with the straight back for now. Push yourself back through the arms if your back wants to bend. It will want to bend, but I'd like you to come with the straight back forward. Come with your hands forward or just with the spine forward and then you can bow. Bow to the ground. You can have your arms stretched or your arms bent underneath your head or you can have your head in the and if the head is not down, that's all right. You can hold your knees and run the back. Allow your whole spine to be pulled out of the hips. Breathe into the belly. Okay, put the hands on the knees and now push yourself up. Backbone by backbone, come back up. Keep the chin close to the neck and lift up your head. Sit up straight. And we're gonna twist. So right, left hand takes the right thigh, other hand goes on the bolster behind you, bend the elbows, lift the elbows away from each other and start twisting from the hips, from actually the base of the spine. Turn left to right. Use your hands to help you twist. Keep on breathing and turn with your exhalation. And now let go and slowly come back to your center line. Wait a moment. 
Lift the top of the head towards the ceiling and we go to the second side. Right hand towards the left knee, other hand goes behind you on the bolster or on the floor and you start twisting and you know, the head will go first, but I'd like you to turn the head back a little bit. Think of the hips and then twist from the base of your spine upwards. So your right hip goes to the front and left hip goes back and then you spinal up and then you can turn the head and bring the chin above the left shoulder. Use your breath to turn. Twist. And then let go with the exhalation, come back, yeah? And wait a little bit, take a few deep cycle of breath. If you are dizzy or uh, you don't see very well, don't worry. The circulation will come back quickly. Okay, so let's, uh, let's stretch out the legs and unfold the legs a little bit. So if you want to come on your four and tap the toes underneath you, and then you press yourself back. Spread the toes as you do that, as you push yourself back on your toes. Yeah, if it hurts you, if you've got arthritis in your feet, then you can just put the instep down and do that so you are not in too much pain. A little bit of stimulation even then is helpful, but uh, if it's too painful, just put the instep down on the floor. As you press back again, look back at your knees. Yeah, use your arms to push yourself back, belly in. Stretch through the spine, move the shoulders down. And come back on four. You can put the instep down, bring your hands under your shoulder. Tap your buttock out, look up, and we go for the cat and the cow. Exhale, around your back, by your head. Press away from the ground. And inhale and reverse. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale as you round up. Look back at your legs. Inhale, reverse. Please carry on in your own time. Okay, carry on. And feel as you proceed with the exercise, how your spine is opening up, how your shoulders are getting more cooperative, how you are able to tilt the pelvis, yeah? When you do this, it's a pelvic tilt. When you do this practice, you are tilting the pelvis and then moving them, moving it in the opposite direction. Move with your breath, yeah? Don't rush ahead. And one more circle, please. In here. Open up. And then come back to the inverse tabletop position. And let's sit back on the heels. Push yourself forward, backwards, not forward. Stretch through the spine, yeah? We are going deeper down. The knees are wide open. Inner side of the thighs underneath the outer side of your trunk. Head is in the air. Neck is in line with your spine. And you release the chest towards the ground. You also release your upper arms. Not really release, you pull down the upper arms. You keep the arms straight and try to touch the ground with the outer side of your upper arm. And now you can put the head down. Breathe into your legs. And now you can relax the arms. Relax the head. And relax the hips as well into the ground. Just be close to the ground for a few cycles of breath. Release your chin, relax your teeth away from each other, your tongue, and release your pelvic floor as well. Allow your sitting bones to lift away from each other. Feel the weight of your head on the ground, and release the brain into the ground as well.
All right, now fold your arms underneath your head and put one forearm on top of the forearm. Put your head on top of it and then turn your head. Place the well, one of your temples on your forearm, if your neck allows you. Yeah, feel what it does, it's twisting your spine in a more subtle way than what we've been doing before. Yet it is twisting the spine and it's opening the shoulder that is close to the temple, which is on the arm. Yeah, release that, allow that to happen. Breathe into your legs. Relax your face. The more you stay, the further it uh, twists your whole spine. So try to feel that in your spine, what is moving, what is not moving. Maybe the shoulder blades will move. Take another cycle of breath and then with the next inhalation, turn the head back to the center. Breathe into your legs and change the position of the arms. Other forearm comes on the first forearm. And with awareness, turn your head the other way around. Yeah? Press the other temple on your upper arm. If you need to bring the arms a little closer to you so you don't overstretch your shoulders. And release your upper body on the lower body, on the back, on the floor. Breathe into your legs. Turn back the head, your next inhalation to the center. You can move your hands, place the hands on the floor or next to your knees and sit up on your knees, on your heels, sorry, with the straight back. And again, it's possible that you are dizzy. So just wait a little bit, keep on breathing. The dizziness will cease. And I'll show you the next position, which will be the hair pose, which is when you walk your hands away and try to bring even further down your upper arms, buttock out. And you can put either the forehead or the chin on the ground, depending on your neck. If your neck is sensitive, put the forehead on the ground and work with the arms like that. If your neck is okay, then try to put the chin on the floor. And release your heart, your sternum to the ground. All right, slowly press the arms well into the ground. Put the forehead on the ground, bring your arms underneath you and sit back on your heels and stretch forward in forward bending hero pose, more actively than before, yeah? So you want to have the head up now, away from the floor and press yourself back into the legs. And actually what I like you to do, you put your hands also cup shape position, yeah? Fingertips on the floor and push yourself back like that through the straight arms look at the floor underneath your head and stretch well out the sides of your trunk okay take one more cycle of breath into your legs and with the hands on the floor next to your knees and with the straight back sit up tall on your legs and again maybe you are dizzy just wait a little bit Trust yourself and then hopefully you are not dizzy anymore. Okay, so let's stretch out the legs. So step back with the right leg. Keep on your toes tucked underneath you and lift the heel away from the hips. Drop that hip down, yeah? So when you step back, the hip will be up. I'd like you to try to turn and drop the hip down. So your knee is facing, the kneecap is facing the floor and then stretch through the right heel and lift the right hip up a bit. So the whole front part of your leg is facing the ground. And let's swap the legs. Step back with your left. Tuck both, uh, on both feet, the toes and the knees and extend your left heel back now. Now check on the left hip. If it's up, bring it down. And then step again into that left heel, press yourself back through the arm. And as the left hip is going down, as you stretch through the left leg, then lift just the hip up a little bit and stretch through the leg again. So you keep the hip contact compact. And come back on your four. 
Okay, so we're gonna do a little twist. So let me just show you how. I don't know how to be, so you see me well. But we're gonna start something like the, the hard pose, except you go out to the side, so your buttock is up, and then you try to put the head turn like that. Yeah, you can even bring the other arm on your side. Yeah, I'll show you from the side. So you're gonna walk your hands to the side, your buttock is up, and then you go closer to the ground and maybe let's just keep both arms there. Okay, so let's get started. Get on your floor. And then walk your hands to your right side. Push yourself back, your hips swing it out, and turn your head, look back underneath your uh, right armpit. Release the chest towards the ground. Keep on pressing yourself back through the arms. Yes, it will open the armpit on the left side immensely. Okay, come back on the floor and walk your hands back. Let's go to the second side. Move the arms, push the hips out to the side and then press yourself down, back. Turn the head and look back underneath your left elbow and left armpit. This will open immensely the right armpit. Okay, come back up on your forehead and move your hands back and just sit down on your heels and I'll show you the next. Take your time, I'll wait for you. And I'll show you the next uh, shoulder opening, which is going to be I will show you from the front first. You're going to bring your left arm underneath you, put the shoulder down and the head down and bring the other arm. This arm on the floor, the hand on the floor is keeping you balanced. Yeah, You try to rest on the other shoulder and maybe turn the head as well. And then you come back and you do the second side. Okay. All right. So the hip is up. So let's start with the, with the right. Yes, so bring the right arm underneath you. Lean on that shoulder. That's it. And then push yourself back through the other arm so you can twist. So this is gonna stimulate the outer side of your shoulder and the shoulder blade. Keep on breathing. So if you can bring the arm above you a little bit behind you, through yeah, the elbow behind you, that's it. To open the armpit there. Okay, so you can drop the arm that is holding you in balance. And roll to the center. Come up. Again, you might be busy. Don't worry, it's just, you know, playing with your nervous system. Other arm on the floor. And then gently move your body weight on that shoulder. The arm is up, the elbow is bent, bring it back. And you have to do, have to press the back of your hands into the ground, otherwise you will fall. So you're balancing actually on that arm. All right, slowly. Come back out of the position. <laughs> We have twisted so much, let's just go on the back for a moment, yeah? So, let's make sure the blood pressure, which we have worked today quite a bit, is gonna get stabilized. So stretch your arms on the side of your head and stretch out your legs. So you want to have both hands on the floor, back of the hands on the floor, and check on your fingernails, yeah? All fingers on the floor. Right hand, left hand, and then all the fingernails, yeah? Some of them will not be on the floor, so just make sure you push them back. Flex your feet. Stretch through the heel. Lift the, actually, let's lift the legs, the uh, hip widths open, and lift your heels towards the ceiling, and pull the nails of your toes towards your hips. Knee cups up. And I'll take a few deep cycles of breath. If your shoulders are tight, yeah, just keep the arms a little bit bent now. 
I'll bend the arms now. And from the active position, we're going to go to a little bit less active position. Okay? You can bend the legs and put the feet on the ground and place your hands on your belly. Take a few refreshing cycles of breath into your belly. Feel the belly rising and falling. And also feel your arms on the floor, hips and shoulder blades on the floor, feet on the floor. Alright. Now, lift your legs back up again, stretch them out. And this time put your hands next to your hips on the floor. So straight arms on the floor, hands holding the floor next to your hips. Flex your feet. This time please bring them together in the center, unless you are on your period. And now point your feet and then flex your feet. Point your feet, flex your feet. Now let's add that toe yoga. Lift the toes away from each other as you flex the feet and move your legs together to the right. Throw to the right hip, keep the legs together. It's not gonna be 45 or 90, it's just 30 degree to the side, maybe a little bit more. Now come back to the center. Refresh yourself with the cycle of breath. Flex the feet, point the feet, flex the feet, point the feet. Flex the feet, lift the toes away from each other and then move the legs 30 to 45 degree to the side. So you roll to the left hip, the right hip comes off the ground. Hold the legs there. Yeah, this will engage your abdominal muscles. But pressing the arms into the ground, you have that. Feel ease a little bit. And now bring the legs back to the center. Flex the feet, point the feet. Flex the feet, point the feet, flex the feet, move the toes away from each other and now take a hold of your knees from behind or the thighs from behind. Have the legs a little bit and pull the legs closer to you. That's it, you can bend the arms and just a little bit pull the, bent leg, the straight legs closer to you. And release, bend the legs. Take a hold of your knees, lift the bent legs far away from each other and then holding the knees or even the shin, pull the bent legs to the side of your trunk. And now rock a little bit from side to side. Get your whole back on the floor. Rock from side to side. Let's give ourselves a really nice back massage. Keep on breathing, keep the legs as close as you can to your side body and then rock from side to side. Yeah? There is a chance that you will feel cramped, but the cramp is being created in your hip. Don't worry, we will do a bit of release for that in a moment. Just rock again one more time on both sides. And then come to the center, move the knees together above you and we're going to Draw circles with the joint knees. Inhale, exhale. Move across the rim of the pelvis as you move the legs. Inhale for a circle or half a circle. Exhale for a circle or half a circle. Try to inhale as long as you exhale, yeah? So that you are the judge of that. One more cycle, please, of breath. And now come to your center point. Wait a little bit, get ready, and let's go in the opposite direction. Move the knees together in a circular way above your hip. Move the legs with your arms as well, not just the legs, moving on their own, dragging the arms. Inhale for a circle or half a circle. Exhale for the same amount of time. Try 
Try to deepen your breathing, yeah? Inhale and exhale for a little longer. Might be just a quarter of a circle with the knees. Last circle of breath. And come back to the center. Press the knees down on the floor. And we're going to go in opposite direction, holding the knees. Let's say the right knee goes to the front, left knee comes back. Lift the both knees away from each other. Left is in the front, right is close to you. And then they meet in the center. They rub each other against each other in the center. So if you would like to please make really big circles with the two legs, yeah? This is a beautiful uh, hip opening, pelvic floor massage and training, which is so, so useful for our older years. But we have to get going with this practice much, much earlier. All right, one more circle. And then bring the legs back to the center. Let's rest a little bit. And then opposite side, yeah? So left knee to the front, right comes to you. They lift away from each other, then left close to you, right away from you. And then they rub against each other in the center, yeah? So make a point of moving the legs really well with your arms, yeah? Breathe deeply. If you need, stop. And then control the legs. It sounds easy. It is not easy. People do all sorts of <laughs> formations with the legs, but what I'm asking them to do. So move them in a circular way and more possibly than not, one leg will not want a circle. So make it happen. Slow down and control it. And three, two, and last time, come back. And you can put the feet down, soles together, knees wide open. And you can hold the thighs from underneath with your hands, yeah? So back of the hands on the ground, palms, you have the thighs, the outer upper thighs in your hands, maybe even your buttocks a little bit. And release your legs into your hands, but press the two feet together. So, Supta Bhatha Konasana, to open the groins, the upper inner parts, top parts of the thighs, open the pelvic floor, but keep the soles of the feet softly together. And breathe into your belly. Of course, you can close your eyes for this. Breathe into the belly and feel the belly rising and falling. And I'm going to give you a little time to release in this beautiful position. Relax your arms and shoulders, elbows, back of the brain, or sewing to the ground. Release your lips, tongue, and of course the teeth away from each other. And breathe. your face and your forehead fully. All right, one more cycle of breath. Exhale, release the legs into the hands and then open your eyes and lift your legs back together in the center and lift them back up again. And I'd like you to please hold your the back of your hands with your hands and then just rock from your left hip to your right hip with the legs up in the air. Not too much, but a little more than you would feel comfortable. The back of your upper arms are on the floor. And you let your legs sway in one direction and then the opposite direction. One more time, please, on both sides. Come back to the center, hold the head, and we're going to cycle to the front. Again, 
be mindful of your whole leg, including your feet and your toes. Move the legs in big circles. Yeah, we have worked a lot by now on the hips and the legs. So just make big circles and don't forget to breathe. Now let's lift the head up as well. Reverse. You can put the head back up on the floor whenever you want. But try to keep it in the air unless you are on your period or unless you have a problem with the neck. Then you, of course, keep the head on the floor. Control the movements of the legs. Three, two, one. And let's map with the feet on the ground. Let the thighs and the knees go together and your feet out away from each other. And we're gonna do one more twist, okay? So move the right knee in the direction of the left foot and the right hip will come up. Spread actually across the arms, turn the head over the right shoulder. Press your right foot well into the ground. You lift that right hip up and extend the right knee even further away from the right hip, the top of the hip. Breathe into the belly. The left leg is in the air, not on the floor. Exhale, come back with the head to the center, bend the legs, let go to the second side, but not before you feel the ground and you are centered. Then left knee moves in the direction of the right foot. Roll to your right side and turn the head to the left. If your neck is painful, keep the head up straight. Press the left foot into the ground to lift that left hip up and the left knee lifts away from the left hip. Spread across your arms, open your chest and keep the shoulders down. Exhale and come back with the head and then with the leg to the center. And release a little bit. Okay, so roll to your side, right side and then come up. And we're gonna go on our right side first and bring the legs on top of each other like this. Yeah, let's just do this a little bit. You can be on your forearm, and then you're gonna bend your left leg and pull the left foot towards your buttock, okay? So you can bring the, the soft something under your hips or your arms, whatever. And I'm just gonna turn to show you what you do with the leg. Yeah, you can stay as you are. So you're gonna bend it, the foot that is up and lift the heel towards the buttock and then try to bring that knee also back. You bend the arm that is holding the leg. Yeah, and if your knee hurts, you keep distance, keep the, the heel away from the buttock. Yeah, everyone now pull the heel away from the buttock. All right, bring the leg back, sit back on the other leg. Wait a little bit, push yourself away from the floor and turn your head above the other shoulder. Try to keep the shoulders down. You can bend the lower leg, the leg that is close to the ground if you need. And now, can you feel this, the thigh that is close to the ground is stretching? All right, exhale, turn your head, look at your hand on the floor, pushing the elbow goes down, and mindfully go to your belly, bring the forearms on your on the floor and head on the floor, and go into prone shavasana. Now, what I'd like you to do with your feet, if you would like to just for a moment look to the camera, so not the top of the feet, you're gonna try to put the outer, the inner side of your feet on the ground. And now you can bend your legs as well. So move the knees away from each other and bend your legs on the floor. This asana has a name, but I don't remember. Sorry. So bent legs on the floor, head supported, chest release into the ground. Breathe into the ground.
Ok. So now, bring your feet closer together, straighten out the leg, the knee cap on the floor, top of your feet on the ground, and we wait a little bit like this in the normal plain prone shavasana. So stay for a few cycles of breath like this. Relax your legs into the ground. Okay, so come on your forearms, bring both forearms underneath you. You step on the floor and then push your step away from the ground. Okay, can go up and down, but I want you to keep the shoulders down. You don't have to push like this. You want to stay close to the ground so you can control the shoulders and the shoulder blades. Yeah, so we're not aiming for that. We are aiming for bringing the and shoulders back and down, narrowing the small of the back and turning the shoulder blades in and bringing the chest forward. Okay. And let's go up on four and sit back on your heels. And stretch through the spine. Back yourself back through the straight arm. Release your hips towards your heels. Okay, so let's go for the second side. And uh, I'm gonna, how do I have to turn? I think I have to turn like this so you see my leg. Yeah, so you're gonna come on the other side. Put both feet, legs on top of each other, and you bring that elbow underneath your shoulder. And first, just turn your head so you are in a straight line. Now you can bend this leg if you are very wobbly. Sorry for showing my back, but I can't show you otherwise what we do. And then lift that leg up, grab it, and try to bring that heel towards your buttock. You can bend your foot, leg on the floor, yeah? If you are very wobbly. This side for me is worse than the other, so I'm tempted to bend that leg. And then lift the knee back. And then play with your leg. Lift the hand, your foot into the hand. Yeah, if you fall over, don't worry, just lift back up, bend the leg on the floor, and then try. So you're pushing also yourself away from with your arm on the floor. So it's half a half a Rear pose. Okay, so slowly let go, bring the leg back on top. Look at your hand on the floor, on your chest, and then roll on your belly again. Hip down, change the crossing of the arms, and turn your feet out. Head on the arms, relax your body. And then try to bend your knees and bring the knees away from each other. I still don't remember the name of this asana, sorry about it. But the bottom line is you want your legs bent on the floor, opening the pelvic floor, relaxing, opening the hips. Breathing to the ground. Okay, one more cycle of breath into the floor. Then move the knees on the top of the kneecap, foot on the ground, bend your arms. And for now, I'd like you to keep both bent arms underneath you, elbows under the shoulders, palms of your hands on the floor. Look down at the floor underneath your head and tighten your buttock muscle. Straight legs, tight buttock muscle. Now, tuck your toes underneath. Make sure the elbows are under your shoulders. You're gonna lift the hips up off the ground, yeah? So compact the hips and come into Chaturanga Dandasana. Look at the floor. Whenever you need, just go down, rest a little bit. Look in front of you. 
And again, look down at the floor, neck in line with the spine, tighten the buttock muscles and lift the hips off the ground. All right, put the hips down, and step down, push yourself away from the ground, open the chest, and I'm gonna move the hands under the shoulder, come up on your four, on your four. Sit back on your heels, come into the warrior pose. And release. Okay, and so I think it's I looked at the clock and don't have much time left, although we have chatted in the beginning. So could you just give me some sign that you can do another 10 minutes if you give me thumbs up? Be okay? All right. Okay, so let's get up to stretch out of the ground. Uh, I want to make sure that everything is well stretched today. It's a little bit more stand up. Okay, you can put everything to the side. Come to your Tadasana, okay? And then just take a hold of your hands on your hips. Move the hands down and then come on your toe tips and down on your heels. Eyes at eye level. Yeah, bring the elbows behind you to open the chest fully and spread your toes. Yeah, that will help you immensely. To stay, find your balance, and then let go of your arms. Maybe in, tailbone forward, shoulders back and down, stand up tall, and lift the top of your head towards the ceiling. Yes, feel the whole body stretching out of the ground and to help. To feel that even more, we're going to bring the hands together in the Maskarasana. And then lift the arms out. And you go up. And exhale, come to your triple, the palm tree pose. Inhale, come back. Exhale, come to the other side. Inhale, come back. In your own time, continue. As always, if you feel your lower back, release your knees, just bend them and sway with your breath. Push that hip out to the side to open the outer hip as you go to the side. And one more round, please. And the last side. Come back to your center and bring your hands back down to your heart. Unfold your arms. Get back to your familiar Tadasana. Get to the middle of your heels and release. Okay, relax a little with your legs and you're gonna bring the legs, hip feet open, bend the knees and uh, we just quickly go through a, a little bit of forward bending. So bend knees, so I don't see my knees very well. And come forward with the straight back, push the thighs back, knee cups up, straighten out the legs and then release your arms underneath you and take a hold of your elbows. Point the top of your head at the floor and pull yourself, your arms towards the ground. Not too much, yeah, not too much, just as much as you can, as it helps you to feel stretching through the side of your body and the back of the body, knee cups up. Change the crossing of the arms and try to stay in the middle of your heels. Yeah, and the toes spreading. Empty your head, empty your whole head into the ground. Keep on breathing. Knee cups up. All right, now just hold the shins from the front. 
walk your hands a little higher as much as you need to be able to straighten out your spine. So you might have to put your hands on your thigh. You might be holding your kneecaps. You might be holding your shins. Somewhere where you can look up without the shoulders going up. Straight back, shoulders back and down. Look up with the chin away from your heart. And lift your hips back. Stay in the middle of the heels and grab the floor with your toes. Tuck your buttock up. And then exhale. And one more time. Bow. This time hold on to your legs, please. Bend the elbows. Lift them away from each other. And lift the elbows forward. Legs straight. Empty your head again into the ground. If you can, you can step on your hand, the back of the hand, on the floor. But if you can't do this, never mind, just hold the legs. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, put your hands on your hips and lift your spine up uh, parallel to the ground, straight back. Shoulders back and down, and then stand up tall. Bring your arms to the side of your body. Step your feet together. Come back in your own time. Shoulders back and down. Eyes at eye level. Be yourself standing tall. And release. Okay, so one more standing pose you will do. And you will turn the feet out for that 45 degree, and you come down into uh, a squatting position where your knees will be on the top of the foot, yeah? And I'll show you from the side, yeah? I don't want you to do this. I like you to do this. So maybe you have to come a little bit higher up, but you are controlling the hips, controlling the legs, yeah? Even if you are very bendy, you can come deep down, but this will happen. So I, I want you, everything in line, the hips tilting, spine and neck, everything, so you might have to put the hands on the thighs for that. Okay. And then try to lean on that leg. And then lift the arm above you, your left arm. And then pull that arm close to the ear and turn your head, look at your upper arm. And lift your left hand away from the left hip. Push the left foot into the ground, away from the left hip. Yeah? This would be a really immense stretch across the left outer hip. Keep on breathing. I know your legs are trembling. Don't worry. Another cycle of breath and then come back to the center. Straighten out the legs to rest a little bit. You can bring the hands to Namaskarasana to catch the breath. Second side, bend the legs. Again, create a position where everything is in line. Then go and lean or put the hand here if it's difficult to lean. And then lift your arm on the side up. Turn the palm towards the floor as you pull the arm close to the ear. And then lift that hand away from the hip. Right hand away from the right hip. Right foot away from the right hip. Turn the head. So press the arm that is on the leg into the leg and push the leg back to twist. Don't forget to breathe. All right, turn the palm up, the ceiling, come back to the center. Bring your hands together, straighten out the legs, turn the feet together, bend your knees and come back to the center. Tadasana. Roll your shoulders back and down. Let it in. Get to the middle of your heels. Spread your toes, open your chest. Relax your arms, relax your face. And lift the top of your head towards the ceiling. Stand up tall. Find your center. Know your center. And now breathe into the whole body. Front, then from the back. Inhale now from your right side. Inhale from the left side. And feel connected. You are connection actually between the earth and the sky and release. Okay, so let's just relax the lower back if you want to get on one of your legs and pull the other up and then the other side. You can repeat it. 
Yeah? And we're going to go down on the floor for the last bit of the class. And I'd like you to please take a worst of, uh, a chair for that. <coughs> and we're going to put the legs up on the chair. And if you'd like to please get a blanket for your hips. And also get whatever you need for the Shavasana. Yeah? If you happen to be one of the few people, I know of you, who don't like this for Shavasana, yeah? it's not good for them, then just go flat on the ground and perhaps support your uh, knees from behind and get your, your shawl or your belt for your eyes and just put the legs up. Yeah, if you are organized, you have more blankets, you could put the blankets underneath your legs. And actually, sorry, now you've gone down. You have your bolster and just toss the bolster there on your legs. It's not necessary, yeah? But it will give you some deeper relief. Yeah? And the blanket under your hip, is it doesn't have to be thick. It's just something for the hip to feel really comfortable. So if it's not comfy, maybe you have carpets underneath your mat. Uh, and then it's soft enough. You can take that thing out. Yeah? Just make it comfortable. Some days you need a, a, a blanket, some days you don't need a blanket. I need a blanket normally, and today I don't need the blanket, probably because of what we've been doing. We did a lot of lower back and hip opening, so it should be nice and open. Yeah, if you want, cover yourself. Even if you are not cold, it's nice to cover when you are not hot. So you should primarily important in your shavasana that you feel comfortable, yeah? But <clears throat> because the weather is so changeable, one minute it's hot, one minute it's cold, that is putting the pressure on everything in our body, yeah? So also the organs of the abdomen, of course, yeah? So in yoga and in Ayurveda, we say you should have a cool head and a warm belly, yeah? The, in most important, one of the most important rule of a healthy life is cool head and warm belly. So if you are not too hot and you have an extra blanket, you can cover your underneath your chest, your belly, and then get really comfy on the floor. You can put your arms on the floor, back of the hands on the ground and Take a nice deep cycles of breath into the floor and slowly let go of everything. Just become one with the ground. Relax your toes and your feet and relax your brain. And get close to the ground. Close the eyes, of course, from top to bottom. And enjoy the position, yeah? Many people enjoy Shavasana the most. So this is the time to do that. Let go of everything. Be yourself one with the ground. Feel the ground with the back, the back of your arms, the back of your legs, the back of your head. And imagine you are on the outside somewhere where it's not hot, it's not cold. And you are soaking up all the nutrients of the ground, of the soil. Keep on breathing and perhaps you can look around and feel and see with your inner eyes what kind of ground you are on. And maybe it is your room. But perhaps it would be nice to imagine another 
kind of underneath, bed underneath you that is made of sand or made of flowers of the meadow and grass, tall grass around you. Maybe you are on pebbles, tiny little pebbles. Whatever makes you feel nurtured and held. And breathe in and breathe out into that soil, into that surface underneath you. And perhaps you can wander around you a little further using the power of your mind, your inner eyes, and see the whole surrounding that surrounds you. Maybe you see a lake. Of course, you keep your eyes open. You use the inner eye, your inner compost. Compass, compost, compass around you. So you might see trees, you might be on the shore. You might see little houses or people, or you might be on your own. Create a vision that is most dear to you. Allow the image to form without trying to form it. And now look around and see whether it is night or day, whether you can see the stars or not, whether you can see clouds. If you see the clouds, try to see what cloud, kind of clouds they are. And relax everything into this beautiful image. It's your special image. Breathe in from this space. Allow your soul to fully immerse there in that space. Melt everything into that space and rest. Let all your worries just disappear in this space. If you wish, you can conjure up a box, put your worries in that box or conjure up a little boat. Put your worries in that boat and let the boat sail out. Throw away the box or bury the box. And just be with yourself. And for the last few seconds, I'd like you to bend your arms and place your hands on your heart. Connect with your heart, with your hands. And connect your hands with your heart. Be connected. And when you hear the third chime of the bell, that will be a sign for you to finish your practice for today. You may move out of your practice in your own special way. Come up to any sitting position and bring your hands together in front of your heart. Bow your head to your heart. Feel connected, wholesome, peaceful. And from that peace deep inside of you, thank yourself for making time and space in your life to practice. Namaste. And you can let go and come out of your practice. Welcome back. <laughs>